Hey everyone, in this video I'm going to show you uh, how to onboard the Industrial Age Management Virtual, which is a relatively new flavor of the IEM. First thing uh, you need to do is download the OVA file. <coughs> so this is actually the main difference between the old ISO and the IMV. Yeah, The old one was an ISO, so you had to create your own uh, virtual machine, apply the settings and then install the system from the ISO. With the OVA, it's a template that you apply uh, to your uh, virtualization software, yeah. So uh, VMware Workstation, ESXi can just open it and will create the virtual machine uh, based on the template. So we go to download software and pick the latest version for the IMV. Um, today it's a 24011. Likely for you, it will be a higher version. Hopefully, the process doesn't change too much. Hit download. I already have it downloaded, but it's a small file, 500 meg. Once you have the file, go to your workstation. I will be using workstation. If you're using ESXi, um, then there is uh, quite a good documentation that you can follow for this actually. So you the file, open and open the IMV. <coughs> Ask us for the name, IMV uh, 15, let's call it, because it's the 15th today, import it. This again, going to open up the OVA and create the uh, virtual machine for us. So it was created with the um, predefined settings, 16 gig of RAM, four CPU, uh, four CPU cores, I guess, uh, 300 gig of hard disk space. Uh, please do leave this as, as they are, especially the RAM. If you try to lower it, it's it's going to cause problems. And this is a bit of a of a troublesome setting. If you leave it as not, and you want to onboard the physical device, then well, your IEM will be behind the nut, and the device will not be able to onboard. So. Unless you really know what you're doing, uh, I would urge you to uh, bridge it to a physical adapter. So I already have the um, some custom adapters defined. You can define them here in the in the network editor for uh, for workstation. Uh, so for me, VM0 is bridged to a uh, to this uh, USB adapter. Again, I would suggest that you. Um, bridge to something specific rather than using the generic setting. So make sure that you have an adapter that is bridged uh, to the physical adapter that you actually want to, to use and use this one. Yeah, so for me, VMNet Zero bridge to my USB adapter. We can power this on. Uh, once this is powered on, it will expect an IP address of a DHCP server. If there isn't a DHCP server, it will tell you there is no DHCP server or the cable is not connected. Yeah, so you need a DHCP server on your network to give this um, an IP address so we can actually access it and then change it. We can change this IP address later, but we need it to, to access it. So go to your browser HTTP 192.168.50.234. Now it's unlikely that you will have the same IP address, so check yours and just go there. As you can see, we get this this wizard that we can start. And here by default, DHCP is enabled, uh, but you may want to disable it because you may want to set it to a static IP address or change some things. If you do leave it as DHCP, make sure there is a reservation for this IP address because an IP address change is not supported currently, which again is important if you go back to the NAT. If you onboard it behind the NAT with the um, NAT IP address, and then you decide you want it to be bridged because you want to onboard physical devices, then if the IP address were to change, and most likely it would, this is not supported. Make sure also that the DNS server that you uh, have here can resolve, um, well, public domains, especially uh, dogs, e one edge security, especially the domains that are listed in the documentation under uh, contacted domain names. If the IEM can't resolve them, then your onboarding will fail. But yeah, these settings are okay for me. Yes, I agree. Yes, the IP address will stay the same. Credentials, so we are creating a new account. Uh, edge at edge.com Top secret edge dot one two three four. <laughs> no, it isn't. It's top secret. Certificates. This is an important place. Yeah, so you can either use self signed certs, uh, just put the common name and country name, and then you will obviously be getting the not secure. If you want to, you can trust them. But the IEM um, takes care of its own certificates. Not one I would suggest for production. 
uh, ideally you should be you should have a certificate management policy strategy in place yeah maybe using publicly trusted certificates or your organization uh, has its own uh, certificate authority and creates uh, endpoint certificates based on this either way like this would be preferable um, I actually have a video that shows you how you can use XCL, XCA, which is a, a certificate management tool to create a certificate authority and then use it to sign your endpoint certificate. And then you can use this uh, here again. It's, it's not super best practice, but if you're doing this for testing purposes, it's probably uh, good enough. So I'm going to use this one that I created in my other video. Yeah, cert and key. It's happy with then it needs a provisioning file aka onboarding file aka configuration to get this we need to go back to our hub so you go to the hub and we create ourselves a new instance imv 15 uh, to be deleted <laughs> yeah we'll delete it later on sorry I have too many of these <laughs> then we download the config aka the onboarding aka the provisioning file uh, this file includes information for the IMV that tells it how it can access the hub uh, and what um, how it can authenticate itself. Yeah. So we use this. Uh, it's this one, and um, as you can see, I already did it one onboarding today. Um, next, then it needs a fully qualified domain name. So this is the domain name you'll use to access this. You could skip this; it will then tell you why it's a bad idea. So I'm going to be using IEM internal. <coughs> Make sure that whatever you have here, the certificate that you provided in the previous step uh, actually um, uses this, yeah, not something else. And make sure that your um, DNS resolver, the DNS server, can resolve this to the IP address of your uh, IEMV. Then you have the recovery key. The recovery key um, is very important. It's not important if everything works fine, but if things go wrong, you lose the user um, details or things are really wrong, you can use this to access the um, the maintenance layer of the IMV. So yeah, note it down and store it. When you click submit, it's going to start onboarding. The first thing it does, it checks, um, is the time okay? And can uh, I access all the nice domains that I showed you before? Because it will pull the Helm charts and then it starts pulling artifacts from there. If it can't, it will tell you. And if it tells you that you can't access it, do check your firewall, do check your DNS uh, server. It's quite likely it's something on the network just blocking the access. Now this will take around 10 minutes. It's what you, it usually takes for me. So um, I'm going to go and grabbing coffee and probably speed up this part. And I would urge you to do the same. Yeah, if you want, grab a coffee, grab a, grab a tea, uh, and I'll, I'll speak to you in sort of 10 minutes. Although for you, it would be probably sad because I would see that. There you go. So that's it. If we click to the edge management, it will take us here. After a moment, it should redirect us itself to the HTTPS IEM.internal. There you go. So again, I have not trusted the CA yet, but if I did, I, I should not be getting the not secure. Um, what was it? Edge at edge.com. There you go. We are all ready to go and onboard it. The first thing I would suggest you do, especially if you're using your own certificates, is try onboarding a device. If your certificate is not correct, as in if it doesn't have all the fields, for example, SAN or something else, um, then the device onboarding might fail. Yeah, if the device will tell you so. So, you know, just try and onboard the device. If it fails, then you might need to recreate your certificates correctly. Again, you can watch my video. Um, that I will link somewhere um, but yeah just go here certificates and just reload your certificates you don't need to start from scratch but apart from this um, that's it you know your IM is ready to go so yeah thanks for watching